And then if we want to break it down. Wow. <laughs> Global Soft Foundation. My immediate reaction was this is awesome. This idea. Special Operations Community. Association for special Operations. You have our support. Let's move. Welcome to Soft Spot. Hey, welcome, everybody. I'm Stu Braden, the president of the Global Soft Foundation. Welcome to Soft Spots. Today is a, a really unique day today because this is the first time we've actually ever filmed a soft spot. So, uh, you know, let's see how this works. Today, we're, we're really fortunate to have Lieutenant General Retired Thomas Trask here with us. Uh, he is an Air Force retired Lieutenant General that spent pretty much all his time in the U.S. Uh, Special <clears throat> Operations Command. He concluded his career as being the U.S. SOCOM Vice Commander, so welcome. Happy to have you here at Good Software. to be with you, brother. All right. So for those of you guys that don't know the organization of the Global Soft Foundation, one of the key components that we have is we have an advisory council. And we have a lot of former senior officers and NCOs and specialists, doctors and whatnot on the on the advisory council. And, and what we try to do is we try to ensure that we have that knowledge and that community of interest with those folks. And so General Trask has been in absolutely instrumental in not just being on the on the council, but actually helping us form it. We're gonna expand it, we're gonna do more with it. But it's really getting our senior leadership, you know, our former senior leaders involved in what we're doing and try to keep them connected. It, it also give us some speed and, and, and purpose behind what we're doing. Um, so we really appreciate you doing it, kind of give you some thoughts. The pay on the council's awesome, it's nothing. So <laughs> these guys do this, you know, uh, you know, with their own time and their own dollars. And so it's really, we really appreciate having you guys do this. So thank you. Tell us, can you give us a little bit about just kind of brief summation of your career? Yeah, I was a uh, Air Force Special Ops helicopter guy. I started off flying rescue for a couple of years, but spent all my flying time after that in, uh, in the special operations world, and, uh, commanded squadron group uh, wing level. And then uh, most of my time in after I was promoted to, to Brigadier, all my time as a general officer was in the joint world and most of it in special operations. Like you said, the last six years of it was was fighting for budgets for SOCOM versus the J-8 and then the last three years as the vice commander. Uh, it's a, it's a, like a lot of folks know that the AO here in D.C. is a little different than other AOs we've operated in, but it's, uh, it's, it's important. It's a war zone. It's a war zone and it's important. And, uh, you know, you, you don't get the same... Uh, uh, rewarding feeling every day from it. It's pretty frustrating at times, but it's critically important to, to carry the message and to fight for the budgets here in D.C. So I was proud to do it. So what a lot of people don't know is that, you know, General Trask was the SOCOM J-8. And if you don't know a lot about the SOCOM structure, the J-8 basically handles all the requirements. And, you know, in, in the procurement process, if you don't have a validated requirement, you won't have a product. It just won't exist. And so it's a great thing that they moved him from the J-8, promoted him to three stars, and set him up to be the vice because he was absolutely prepared uh, for that position and stuff. And he was armed to go to war inside the building. It's a, it's no shots fired, but it's a, it's pretty brutal up there. And and so, you know, it was great having you to do that. I thought, I know you, you, the community benefited from having you do that. So I think it's a great progression for the guys down at SOCOM J-8 to get up there and get a taste as the, as the vice, and I think they can do a lot, especially when budgets are tight. You know, yeah. we were going through sequestration, and um, it, it's not a, it's, those are not fun times. I mean, it's a, uh, something's getting cut off, you know, and, uh, and, and, and so you've got to defend the right things, you got to know the requirements, and you got to know what to, what you're willing to let go, what you can survive taking a hit on. So, um, for those of you who don't know this, uh, this is a big year. We're in our sixth year. We're about 5.5 years along in the, in the Global Soft Foundation. And this is kind of a strategic year for us. You know, we've done a couple initiatives and, you know, we've uh, decided to uh, partner with a large, uh, the large, the world's largest defense planning firm uh, to help take on our international events. It'll absolutely change the way we do business. We've also decided that, that we needed to get more professional and more robust in our, our activities up here on Capitol Hill and in Washington. And it's really important, even from the international standpoint, simply because our international partners watch everything we do. Everything we do matters and stuff. And so, you know, as the foundation grew and we got our wheels underneath us and we had a solid base, we knew it was important that we needed a solid partner. We needed a firm. We needed a company, not a person. And so we were blessed to have Navigators Global come on and, and, and be a partner with this. And they're going to help us do this. 
But what we've planned to do is we've now got a robust engagement plan for Washington, D.C. And could you talk about that a little bit, kind of tell us what the future looks like and why we're yeah. doing it, why it's important? Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, you know, you and I have spent the last couple of days here in town. I know it's not the funnest thing you do, come to Washington, carry up to Capitol Hill. But uh, when I retired uh, a couple of years ago uh, from the vice job, Navigators was one of the first groups I kind of jumped on with and, and, uh, and work kind of part time with them. Because you know the the importance of communicating that message is is absolutely critical to everything we do. You and I always participated in there'd be dog and pony shows, or you'd have to, you know, talk to some staffer group. We never understood why we were doing that stuff. We were having to break training to come in and yep. do those kind of things. And then as you get senior, you kind of understand how important that stuff is. The education process here in town in the capital is something that has to go on continuously every year over and over again. It doesn't matter if the administration changes or not. It doesn't matter if there's going to be new people, new staffers that have to understand what's going on in every part of where every dollar is spent in our budget. So the DOD gets treated like just like everybody else in the budget. Uh, the Air Force, SOCOM, the Army all get treated the same. It's a constant education process. So uh, one of the things I learned quickly was navigators understand is how to do this. So reaching out to a firm that understands the town, uh, has the context to get us into the right people so that we can continuously reinforce that, that message for them uh, is critical to make, making sure that we continue to resource special operations the way it needs to be going forward. You know, we made a uh, tremendous uh, investment in our special operations forces since 9-11. You and I have been both beneficiaries of that as a last decade of our career. Um, but that investment needs to be protected. I mean, we understand how long it takes to build a special operations force like this. You know, when, you're, when your force is based on a 10-year NCO being the, the core element of it, there's no way to get that except for 10 years. It takes 10 years to build the experience and you have to invest it and then you have to protect that investment. And, uh, and that's something that we have to continuously uh, uh, get that message out there so so folks understand it and, and that's what Navigator's been able to help us do. That's awesome. One of the things we did over the last two days is you know our, our platforms for engaging Congress and, and you know what is the we have to educate them this is all about the educational piece you know we're not here to speak on behalf of US SOCOM that's not what we do we are simply providing advice and education based on our experiences and our connections to the community and and we try to use the Senate and how soft caucuses. And so over time, those have been instrumental in making SOCOM, frankly, what it is today and yeah. stuff. And so we see our, our, our future role as supporting that, making that more robust than it has been. Can you kind of talk a little bit about what we think we might do with that? Yeah, I think, you know, as uh, my last job as a vice, the House Soft Caucus was, was fairly active. We had routine uh, events that they would hold, and it was one of the best ways to, to educate them on what our needs were, what the issues that we were dealing with. If you're not familiar with what a caucus is supposed to do, it's just an informal group of people that kind of believe in the same thing and want to support a cause or an issue. And so there are tons of different caucuses that uh, congressmen or senators can join. Uh, the House Caucus uh, for Special Operations has always been a useful tool that we could reach in and, and get help when we needed to. For the last decade or so, the, the caucus on the Senate side had kind of withered away to nothing. and so. Uh, I think one of the important things is we've got to reach out and re-energize uh, uh, that caucus. I think we've we had some success this week. We've got some senators that are very in, interested in helping us kind of regenerate the, that caucus on the Senate side so that you have a voice into both chambers and, and we can uh, use that tool to, to do that education. So uh, it was a, a great week. I know there's more time on Capitol Hill than you care to do, but it's important business. and. Uh, and uh, we got nothing but positive uh, responses all week, which was great news. I actually had a lot of fun. It was uh, <laughs> it was really a blast. And for those of you who don't know historic, I'm going to give you a history piece here. So, in 2015, Megan and I went up on Capitol Hill. <laughs> we met with staffers in uh, in um, Representative Adam Smith's office. And out of the blue, in the meeting, you know, the senior staffer there said, "Why don't the Global Soft Foundation do a platform document like all the other service professional associations do?" You know, to be frank, we didn't think anybody read those, and we did never. You know, they they look good on coffee tables, and yeah. we didn't know. We didn't really appreciate or understand the value, or I didn't, the value of that thing. And so, 
Um, we set out to create a document that we call Soft Imperatives. The, the, the Global Soft Foundation has actually been doing this since 2015, and they're all published on our website, so there's no surprise there. Um, the, the evolution of it's been interesting. You know, we don't speak for US SOCOM, so we, we do speak for our constituents, and we've got, you know, over 2,000 individual members. We've got corporate partners. We do speak on their behalf. We have a significant, about 68% of our uh, individual members are still on active duty. So we have a, you know, we have a pretty good group of folks that we, that we represent. And so, you know, we reach out to them and we, we sent a survey out to them and we said, hey, you know, we're trying to feel from them, like, what do you want this foundation to advocate for? Um, what's great about having navigators is, you know, we've got people that are professionals. They know how to do this now. They're going to help us do that in a much better way. And then, you know, historically, once the document was printed and produced, you know, to be honest with you, we didn't have the expertise, the network, and the bandwidth. We were just handing them out like leaflets and stuff. And so we got a whole new campaign for this year. It, the timing of it is significant. It fits into the Washington cycle. Um, the way we're going to release it's going to be new. Can you talk yeah. a little bit about what we got for it, the future? Because I'm excited about yeah, it. Yeah, I think it's going to be great. I think, you know, if you notice, as we were over there today, every time you would hand one to a member, to a senator, to a congressman, uh, they would smile back at you and just slide it off to the person sitting next to them. So they all had a military advisor or a national security advisor. And, and one of the things I learned in the last few years of my active duty time was those people really do go into it in detail. And what Navigator is going to be able to help us do is put it in exactly the language that those people need so that they can take action on it. So uh, I think that's going to just uh, take the product. And, I, and I've, been, you know, I've signed up for, for GSF as soon as you guys were established, and I've participated the last couple of years in the, in the uh, surveys and, and helping us craft that message. You know, obviously one of the things that we don't want to do is get out in front of the command or ever say anything that, that leads anybody to believe that we're trying to represent. U.S. SOCOM, uh, but there are common themes that we all understand as, as folks that are still in or, or formers in the business of what's important to us. And so uh, I, I, think it's, uh, I think it's important that we can craft that message in a way that it's useful, like I said, for staffers and members to understand our business and, and what we're doing. So I think as we build the product this year, we set it up to, to put it out so that it can inform next year's budget build. Uh, it can be even more useful and, uh, and, and helpful to those staffers that have to do that heavy lifting. We've got a, we've got a planned event that we're going to release this. We're not going to stand out and hand it out anymore. Yeah. So on the 12th of February, um, there's going to be a, a big <clears throat> event up here in the D.C. area. We've actually got it posted on our website now. There will be more information that will come out on that as, as, as we get to it. But, you know, for those of you that are out there that actually care what we're doing and care what we do on the Hill, and in the D.C. writ large, um, Save the date for 12 February. Um, it'll, it's the timing's perfect. We think it's going to get us in a position that it's it's there and it's available for the budget for the the building of the National Defense Authorization Act, and so it's going to be a really good event. So we already know that we're going to get a lot of support from the Hill. Um, what are your thoughts on like how you know how do we how do we make that more successful? Yeah, I, I think uh, you know one of the things is is using the GSF in, uh, industry partners as a key element of this. Uh, I think it'll be kind of the centerpiece that we talked about of energizing these caucuses. So uh, uh, I, I think it'll be important that we get good participation uh, from members and their key staffers uh, for that event. And I think everybody was very excited about it as we talked to them uh, this week of doing that. So that engagement between your general membership, your industry partners, and the members of the soft caucus, it makes it kind of the perfect uh, discussion circle here in town. It'll be in the Capitol building, so it'll be easy for members and their folks to come on down and, and participate in it and, and get that discussion started early in the budget cycle next year. Uh, and it's, you know, it's nothing magical that goes in there. These are the, these are the, the normal routine issues that have to be dealt with every year in special operations to protect investment, to look for new opportunities in research and development. Uh, and you can generate that discussion early and uh, make sure that folks are paying attention to it from the first, from the day one. I'm going to interject for a minute to talk about two things. One is about the soft imperative survey, which feeds that platform document that Stu's been talking about that we use to educate staffers on the Hill. That survey for this year has just been released in conjunction with this podcast. So please use the link in the episode description to give us 10 minutes of your time and take that survey. 
especially if you are currently active duty or you recently transitioned. Secondly, I'd like to highlight a GSF partner, ATN Corporation. ATN is the leading tech optics company that is revolutionizing their industry. They are the market leading manufacturer and developer of 4K resolution digital smart optics for day and night operation, as well as smart thermal imaging optics for ultimate night operations. The new Ultra HD sensor and dual core processor technology offers the processing power that will deliver a picture quality that is unmatched with no loss of resolution up to 10 times the magnification. HD video recordings, wireless streaming, ballistic calculations, image stabilization, laser ranging, and much more are now standard functions on most of their optical systems. You'll be able to see, touch, and even use ATN Optics at our demo days coming up in North Carolina on 19 to 20 November. So make sure you put that on your calendar. So in summary, take the soft imperative survey and register for demo days so you can check out our partner ATN and their optics. I'm excited. You know, all the services do what we're doing, you know, we're planning to do and stuff. And so this is the first time the special ops community has really ever had an opportunity to do this. And so, you know, if you've ever done these events, you know, I'll just tell you from my experiences about the third year, you know, the first year is kind of awkward. You, it, it either goes better than you thought in a, in a huge way, or it kind of takes a change or a turn. By the third year though, you're really comfortable with what you're doing. You kind of get cocky and you, <laughs> you know, you, you really have, you feel good about what you're doing. You also have a brand for the thing. And so, you know, we, we are looking for sponsors out there. We're looking for our industry partners and folks to, to, to help us make this a reality. These things cost money. I mean, they're not free. Um, and then we also want the opportunity to highlight some of you know these 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 great companies that support the special operations community. I mean, this is a, a phenomenal opportunity for you folks to get in front of some some of the most key policymakers in the world, uh, and let people know who you are and what you yeah. do and stuff. And so, uh, we're really excited about this. You know, I, I, I at this time I will tell you, you know, we're still trying to figure out how we intend to execute it because. To be frank, we have so many unbelievable options. I don't know how we're going to tell some of these notable people the agenda's full. I, yeah. So it's going to require some magic to make, a, you know, to, to, to kind of keep this going and keep everybody satisfied. So, But we're extremely excited after the last two days. We look forward to doing this, and uh, we look forward to working with Navigator Global. So Yeah. I don't think you're going to have trouble, Stu. One, you guys and your team have gotten really good at putting on events and doing this kind of thing. But with the audience having it in the Capitol building, having that access to, uh, to some of the highest decision makers in our land. Uh, I don't think you're going to have trouble with folks being excited about coming and participating. And, and uh, I think it'll just take the quality of the event up to another level because you get the right people. That's always the key, right? Just get the right Absolutely. people in the discussion. So uh, I'm excited about it as well. Great. And so, you know, for those of you that don't know, you know, we work through the outreach committee and the, and the foundation. And so if you're not a corporate partner and you're interested in joining, I mean, Now's the time, uh, you know. Come off the sideline. You know you're not gonna, you're not gonna make a play on the sideline. So you got to get in the game and support the community any way you can. We, and if you're in the soft community, whether you're active duty, retired, industry partner, you know we want you in the foundation. This is your professional association, um, and, and you know we need you to be involved in this. That's the only way this is going to be successful. And we need you to participate in these events. I mean, you can't just. This is not about writing a check and saying show me the magic and stuff. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. I mean, if you know if you want to change public policy, you have to change public perception. And so we need you to be involved in this if you want us to help sustain all the great things that the special ops community is doing. Any final comments or anything you'd like to say, sir? Hey, I you know, one of the things that uh, I think we're doing well in GSF and, you know, as an airman, I'm also a member of Air Force Association. And uh, when people are doing things right, you copy them. There's Absolutely. no reason to try to reinvent it. Uh, uh, AFA had their big event here in town this week. I was over there on Monday um, and, and I'm, I think we can learn a lot from watching how the services do this. And we don't need to do it in a way that, that uh, competes with what those service organizations, they take care of our special ops airmen and soldiers and sailors and marines in a lot of ways. But there are some unique needs uh, for the people that grow up and live in the special operations community that those other services are not gonna know how to deal with or focus on. And that's why there's, I believe there's truly a need for GSF and for us to stand into the, stand up, go into the breach and tackle those problems that are unique to special operations. We talk all the time in the service about the unique requirements, the unique 
skill sets, the unique things that we need, those things continue on, on afterwards, they continue on on the Hill, uh, they continue with your Soft for Life program, all those are unique challenges that we have in special operations. So sir, you know yesterday as we, as we went around the Hill, you know one of the most important things that we do is we have to be able to convey that, you know, who our membership is, what are they out there? You know, it's a challenge for us as we go around. You know, we talk to a lot of young people and stuff. You know, when we were young, we really didn't think about these things. And it wasn't because we didn't care. We just weren't, you know, we just weren't educated on it. We didn't know yeah. why these types of organizations exist. You know, if, if you were talking to a young airman or sailor, marine, or soldier anywhere out there yeah. in the world, and they came up to you and said, hey, why should I be a part of this? You know, It's free for active duty to join the foundation, but why Why, do, why would they care? What's yeah. the reason behind it? Well, like, you know, you noticed a couple times as you were telling people about the foundation as we were visiting uh, offices, they were caught by the number of people that you already represent and the percentage of them that are currently serving. So having people that are currently in the field, active duty members from all the services, uh, that's a, that gives credibility to the organization and s congressmen and senators are gonna know that you're representing those people that are serving today. They wanna serve those people. So if you're out there uh, and you're in active duty right now, your leadership, those congressmen, they consider you voters, so certainly they're gonna, they're gonna think about it from that perspective is I wanna serve voters, but they really do wanna take care of the military. And so if you're, repre you're represented by joining the organization, it gives credibility uh, and it makes people pay attention to wanting to take care of your problems. The other thing is, and I think through your survey process for the imperatives document, it gives you a voice, right? So uh, you certainly have your voice up through your chain of command to your bosses to an extent. Uh, you know, we're pretty good about listening to each other and solving problems together uh, down on the teams. But to, for those things that just don't seem right to you, that you have a question, you want to voice a concern, uh, this is a way to, to kind of have a voice that can go all the way up and if there's others like you that express the same concern, it's a way that we can go straight to the Hill, straight to the, uh, somebody in the Senate or the Congress that's gonna help us solve that problem. And so to me, that's one of the biggest reasons. We're representing uh, the needs of the people that are memberships of the organization, right? So, so join up and voice your concerns. Absolutely, if, again, it's, it's free for active duty to join. You can do it online, it's not hard to do. Uh, and, and you know we would encourage anybody out there if you could help us grow our membership that'd be great so you know one of the you know the things is when you get involved in the hill you know there's a lot of people with speculation they say oh you guys are you lobbying and, and as you all well know that you know we have platoons of lawyers that are involved in what we do but we're advocates and we educate we don't lobby we don't pay anyone we don't give anyone money we're just give them advice and information so can right. you kind of expound on that and you know yeah. how we're doing this yeah like we talked about before it's it, it's about education right so there is a uh, you know navigators is a lobbying firm they do real lobbying but a lot of what they do is like this it's about education and education is not necessarily lobbying and in this case, it's not lobbying at all. Uh, that education process is really critical, and it doesn't mean that we're trying to speak for anybody in the Defense Department, we're not speaking for US SOCOM, um, but it's a group of people who are like-minded coming together to educate uh, staffers and, and, uh, and members on the Hill, and that education is what the important part, that's the whole message. They want it, they, they'll ask for information, uh, so it's, this is not something that has to be forced into, the, uh, into their offices. That's why a caucus exists, is simply so that you can be educated on that issue or, or that cause, whatever the caucus is supporting. So it's the reason that uh, a caucus is created in the first place, is because that group of people want to get more educated on whatever the topic is. So uh, I, I think it's, it's, it's a pretty easy thing. It's, it, you get nervous when you put lobbyists next to you, I work with navigators. I'm not a lobbyist. I'm not registered. You have to be registered to be a lobbyist. Uh, but I do a lot of things like this for them to help communicate things to support veterans' causes and, and other things. It's a perfectly normal way to do business on the Hill. That's a great topic, you know, the veterans' cause, you know, because a lot of people go, well, what's in the, you know, the, a lot of people have never read the soft imperatives and stuff. And so, you know, like what's an example or a vignette, you know, that, that you could do. And, I, and I'll just give you one great example of stuff. And so, the Traumatic Brain Center out there in Mission Viejo um, was working with U.S. Warcom. They had a couple guys that were, you know, frankly suicidal. 
and they had been given opioids and all kinds of other things. And all these neuroscientists were out there and they had come up with a mag non-invasive magnetic residing helmet type of, uh, of treatment that was having phenomenal results. It didn't cure it, but it absolutely made the person a whole different person. And as long as they were getting the treatment and periodic stuff. And so, you know, one of the great things of what we did is we, we knew that US SOCOM wanted this thing. Um, a lot of the people that had the, the traumatic brain injuries weren't on active duty. They were now no longer in the force. Um, and so we knew we, ne we needed to help our, our, our veterans that had these things. And so we, we partnered with the Traumatic Brain Center and we were able to um, get Congress to, you know, to establish an experiment inside the VA. Uh, and so that, ex that, 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 that test is ongoing and from everything, all the indications that we're getting, it's phenomenal results. And so we're really excited about it. And these are kind of one of the vignettes that we see the soft imperatives helping with. It's just education, advocacy, you know, that our community needs these types of things. And so uh, if you haven't looked at the soft imperatives, please do. And if you're in the foundation, you're an active member, you know, we expect to see the, 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 the new survey coming out from us. And, you know, get at the end, in all the surveys we do, there's an open spot in there. If you have any issues that aren't covered in the survey that you think ought to be in the survey, you, you write them in. And, uh, you know, if it's the majority of the folks inside the organization uh, feel the same way you do, then, then we'll make that a, a topic of, that we will push forward in the survey or in the imperatives document uh, so we can see if we can help, you know, help get that resolved in any way, shape or form. So awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here today. We really appreciate it. And for the first video podcast of Soft Spots. Thank you, sir. Yeah, appreciate you bet. Good to see you. All righty. Soft Spot is brought to you by the Global Soft Foundation, a 501c3 based in Tampa, Florida. If you're new to us, you can find out more about the foundation at gsoft.org. That's golfsierraoctoberfoxtrot.org.